as we're in the churchyard, I thought it would be useful just to tell you that this is a rowan, a young rowan tree um, that's taken root at the foot of yet another giant redwood. Not in flower yet, so now is a good time for you to have a, have a proper look at the way the tree is growing, um, how many branches it's got coming out from the ground, so that later on in the year you will recognise it for what it is when it has its blossoms and when it has its fruits. And right next to that rowan is a really lovely silver birch. So lots of different kinds of birch. You can tell that this one is silver because it's a silvery colour. Birch in itself is a pioneer tree. That's a really useful kind of tree in that it will be the first to inhabit uh, barren land. And as it grows, it provides a habitat for um, where you can see flowers growing around here, you've got ivy, um, but also shelter for voles, field mice, birds. Um, so yeah, birch, very, very important tree. I do think that these funny little knots that are peculiar to the birch kind of look a bit like weird alien eyeballs. Like the beech, the birch is also associated with writing. Um, and Native American Indians would use um, the outer wood of the birch to make things like um, canoes even. Um, if you go to reenactment society places, you may see um, items made from birch too, such as drinking mugs, etc. So it's had a long association uh, with writing and paper, just like the beach. Also, if you manage to find rotting bits of birch, often around the bottom or kind of spread around. Um, if you dry these out, they make a really, really effective fire lighter. So, I mean, you'd obviously want to get rid of the wood lice and things, um, but the dry, the, these, these dry little bits that you can find uh, make a really, really handy uh, fire starter, you know, if you're having a picnic in the woods or something like that.